Hello everyone and welcome to the Portland Street Coal Harbor Road Functional Plan online live session. This project originates with the Integrated Mobility Plans Action 121 that calls for the development of strategic corridor plans for roads that are key to regional traffic flow, public transit, goods movement and active transportation. The project team for this particular project consists of various members from HRM staff as well as WSP as the primary consultant. This is an online open house information meeting for Portland Street Coal Harbor Road functional planning study. My name is Ann Winters. I'm a planner with WSP and with me are members from the project team, including transportation engineers with WSP and HRM staff with strategic transportation planning, regional planning and Halifax Transit. Together, we're here to present the Portland Street Coal Harbor Road project, listen to comments and field any questions that you may have. We're utilizing a platform to help keep the presentation and project sharing ability optimum. To mitigate background noises or interruptions, you are all on mute. You will have the ability to ask questions throughout the presentation, and we'll be addressing them during the Q&A session after the presentation is complete. You can ask a question at any time by following the directions you see on the screen. Our team is keeping track of the questions that come in and we'll be addressing them at the end of the presentation. The presentation tonight will be recorded and will be made available on Halifax's Shape Your City platform. Beyond tonight's session, there will be other opportunities to ask questions and provide your input. There is a project website on HRM Shape Your City platform where an online public survey will be available. You can also reach out to the project contact Harrison McGrath via email or telephone during regular business hours. For the next 15 minutes, we have a PowerPoint presentation that will introduce you to the project. Then we will take the remainder of the time to collect comments and or field questions that may arise. So now a little bit about the project itself. The purpose of the project is to develop a functional plan for Portland Street, Coal Harbor Road between Alderney Drive and Bissett Road. There are two objectives as part of this project. The first is to create a functional plan of the corridor that improves road safety for all road users, as well as enhances user experience and efficiency, particularly for public transit users and users that travel uh, via active transportation. The second objective is to consider land use planning alongside this transportation planning work. Um, and we do that, we're, we will be doing this as part of the study to explore where future growth will be directed within the overall study area. So here's an image of the study area. As I had said, uh, we, the study area starts near Alderney Drive um, within downtown Dartmouth. So it's where Alderney Drive meets Prince Albert and Portland Street. And it travels along the corridor all the way down to Bissett Road in Coal Harbor. A little bit about what is a functional plan. So a functional plan is a vision of a corridor that directly informs how transportation, transportation infrastructure can be planned and implemented. Functional plans are used to determine viable options and the potential impacts of these options of, on roadways within a given corridor. And it often requires consideration of how adjacent properties are used and how the road fits in with the surrounding neighborhoods. Understanding potential or viable options and as well as the impacts that come along with them is really a critical step prior to decision making um, and de commissioning detailed design of a road. Functional plans are informed by a number of things, including municipal policies, plans and objectives. They're informed by understanding and assessing the current conditions of a road, how traffic flows or how traffic doesn't flow and understanding how the surrounding properties are utilized, as well as the overall context of the road within the surrounding neighborhoods. Functional plans are informed by engaging with stakeholders in the overall community. And finally, functional plans are informed by assessing some potential options uh, that are created and understanding the impacts on traffic flow and neighborhood development within those options. So why here? The Integrated Mobility Plan was approved by and adopted by Council in two, 2017. 
It's Halifax's first land use and transportation master plan document, which directs future investment in transportation demand management, public transit, active transportation, and roadway network planning. The IMP was created and adopted in recognition that as our communities grow, the city needs to think differently about how people move beyond single occupancy vehicles. This document recognizes the importance of utilizing efficient movement of people through other modes that are more sustainable travel choices, such as public transit, walking, or bicycling. The rapid transit strategy furthers the work done in the IMP and sets a precedent to build a rapid transit network to connect suburban communities in, in towards the regional center. Both the IMP and the rapid transit strategy have identified Portland Street as a corridor for transit priority measures to accommodate one of four bus rapid transit lines. A critical component of the IMP that's being carried forward as part of this project has been addressing the need to plan for transportation networks alongside land uses. And it does this because there are a number of benef benefits and, and synergies by between the two components in doing so. By planning for the two pieces together, we're able to identify areas for more growth and housing opportunities. We're able to integrate land use and transportation planning so that they mutually benefit one another. We're able to provide better connections for current and future residents. We're able to make better use of public investment. And we're able to promote uh, more sustainable growth and travel patterns and choices across our city. As part of this project, our group will not only be looking at opportunities to create a new vision for the corridor itself, it will also be looking at future supporting land uses and areas for opportunities for intensified growth so that the investments that are recommended into the corridor can be rationalized and supported. As part of this project, we'll be looking at land areas that go a bit further beyond the immediate properties right next to the corridor. We are exploring areas of potential growth to the east of Russell Lake and to the east and north of Morris Lake, which are shown generally here in purple. We know these areas are positioned to accept future growth. However, they are currently being limited due to capacity issues of the existing transportation network. In 2002, a traffic study identified there were significant constraints and congestion along Portland Street and that no further development should be permitted until a solution was presented that would take some of the congestion off of Portland Street. A project that was proposed as a potential solution for traffic capacity issues was the Mount Hope extension, which would connect the far end of Caldwell Road to Highway 111. The Mount Hope extension was envisioned to serve as an alternative route to the constrained Portland Street corridor and would be able to facilitate increased growth in the areas that you see in purple. There are challenges associated with this project, including the connections proximity to the Shearwater airfield, which has really constrained the road's development for years. While this study will not make the decision or even make a recommendation on if the Mount Hope extension should or should not be built, we are considering these lands identified in purple in our growth, in our growth scenarios that we're projecting for the corridor, as well as considering the amount of growth and the impacts to traffic with that growth, given the various levels of potential investment that could be completed for the existing transportation network. So that leads us a bit into what this study is considering. This study will be designing a corridor that is consistent with the integrated mobility plan and looking at the corridor from a complete streets lens. A complete streets lens means considering the rede redesign of the corridor and considering users of all ages and abilities and users traveling through various modes, including walking, bicycling, and public transit, personal motor vehicles, and so on. The study will be looking to improve public transit operations along the corridor. It will look, be looking to improve safety for all road users. It'll be looking to enhance user experience and safety for people walking, rolling, and cycling. The study will be considering where future growth, both in 
form of new housing developments and new employment opportunities could be directed to support demand and transit investment. And as I mentioned on the previous slides, the study will be considering the impacts to growth and vehicle flow on Portland Street and Cole Harbor Road, given the varying levels of investment onto the current transportation network. There are a few things that we know entering into this study, or a few important things. Um, one, we know that Portland Street Coal Harbor Road is an important transportation route. Two, we know that Council has approved the Rapid Transit Strategy, which does identify Portland Street as a bus rapid transit line that has dedicated transit only lanes inbound from Portland Hills Terminal into downtown Dartmouth as well as partially outbound beginning in Gaston Road. We also know that current land use policy limits future residential development that's east of Russell Lake and north and east of Morris Lake due to the existing constraints in the transportation network. Here's the study area of the corridor once again. While it is all the same street, it is important to note that there is a name change from Portland Street to Coal Harbor Road at Caldwell Road. The corridor is long and it does change in size, road configuration and surrounding land uses. The next four slides will introduce the corridor into segments and I'll talk briefly about some of the more challenging issues we're considering within each section. The first segment starts in downtown Dartmouth from the Five Corners intersection, so where Prince Albert meets Alderney meets Portland Street, and it travels along the corridor to around Gaston Road or the Manor Drive area. A lot of the corridor is one lane in each direction, with a few exceptions for turning lanes at signalized intersections. Along this stretch, there are sidewalks on both sides of the street, with a number of homes and businesses fronting directly onto the street front. In terms of how traffic flows or conditions along this segment, we feel the traffic flows relatively smoothly, especially in comparison to the other segments of the corridor. We do anticipate that there are currently some challenges to access driveway and side streets, at, particularly at certain times of the day. For walking and cycling purposes, it's relatively comfortable in comparison to the other segments of the study area. There are larger trees that provide protection from traffic and, and weather elements for pedestrians. It is a shared road with cyclists and cars. However, the lanes are, are relatively wide and there is limited on-street uh, par parking in this section, which, which can force cyclists into traffic. So while it is more comfortable for active transportation users in this section, especially in comparison to the other segments of the corridor, our team will be looking to improve upon these conditions. The next segment is from Green Village Lane or the Penhorn Plaza area and goes over the Cirque to, the, to Eisner Boulevard. The size of the right-of-way expands quite a bit to allow for the interchange from the corridor onto Highway 111 in all directions and continues eastward to allow for four to five traffic lanes along this segment. For land uses, this segment includes the Penhorn lands to the northwest corner and as well as quite a bit of commercial and service land uses in the form of strip malls and car dealerships, many of which are set back from the street with large parking areas directly fronting the corridor. There is a little pocket of single family homes on the north side of the corridor, which access directly onto Portland Street and are located just west of Carver Street. We know there are some challenges associated with this section, including the intersection at Baker Drive and Woodlawn, simply due to the sheer volume of vehicles trying to get through this area. Active transportation conditions also aren't ideal. Walking from Penhorn over the Cirque is hazardous due to inattentive drivers, limited separation distances, and high volumes and speeds of cars. There are sidewalks on both sides of the street after the circumferential highway crossing, but there are really no, little to no separation distances between pedestrians and, and traffic. There's no trees or any kind of covering to protect pedestrians from the sun, wind, or rain. 
and pedestrians have to cross a number of busy driveways as they walk along the corridor. There are also no separated or designated bicycle facilities, so cyclists are expected to travel along the corridor with traffic. The next segment goes from Portland Estates to Caldwell Road and includes a stretch of treed area along the corridor which serves as a buffer to the surrounding neighborhoods on either side of the corridor. The two sidewalks continue on both sides of the street and they do provide a bit more separation distances, although it's still not a lot of protection from the sun and rain. This section also doesn't have a lot of refuge or breaking points in the walk. Uh, the blocks are very big and it is a seemingly long trek from Portland Hills Terminal to the Superstore Commercial Center um, with not a lot of opportunity to stop and take a rest. It also has little to no mid-block connections. So to cross the street, the traveler needs to go to a signalized intersection, which is highly inconvenient given the size of the blocks on this segment. The final segment is from Caldwell Road to Bissett Road, which is largely composed of smaller scale commercial strip malls and parking lots which, which abut the corridor. A large part of the corridor is two lanes each way with a, a center left turning lane. Some of the challenges with this segment, we know there are some issues around the Bissett Road intersection and that there are high volumes of traffic at the Forest Hills Parkway intersection, particularly during certain times of the day. For active transportation, it's similar conditions as the previous two segments. While there are sidewalks on both sides of the street, there is very little to no separation distance uh, between the sidewalk and, and vehicles traveling along the corridor. There's little to no protection from the uh, from sun, wind, or rain, and pedestrians are expected to walk across a number of very busy driveways. For cycling, the, the car, they are still expect cyclists are still expected to share the road with cars, um, and given the higher volumes and speeds that cars travel along the segment, it doesn't create very um, safe conditions for cyclists. So this project is split up into two phases. We are currently in phase one, which is data collection and collecting uh, community input. We have been having stakeholder consultation sessions throughout the winter and early part of this spring. We're hosting tonight's online public meeting. And as I said previously, there is a project website with an online public survey available for, for anyone who wishes to participate. The survey is open starting tonight and will be open until April 21st. Once phase one wraps up, we'll go into phase two where we start developing two to three viable concept options for the corridor. Once those options have been refined, developed and refined, we'll go back out to the community and to stakeholders with similar engagement opportunities. So we'll be going back to the stakeholders to consult them on the concepts, We'll be hosting another online residence survey and hosting another online public meeting. Once phase two wraps up, our team will finalize our report and submit the report along with recommendations to HRM staff to carry forward. We'll now take some time to answer some of your questions and take down comments. Um, Again, if you have a question, this is these are the directions of how to of how to submit them. Um, if there are questions beyond tonight, we ask you to uh, either participate in the online survey or reach out directly to the project contact, Harrison McGrath, uh, which you can see on the left side of your screen. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight, and we look forward to answering your questions.